Buenos dias. Well, in the first place, all my apologies that the Iceland Vulcano didn't allow me to be with you today. I hope that this presentation is a little compensation of not being here in person. Uh, at least it gives the topics and the ID that I would like to communicate to the biotechnologists from Nicaragua. And I think biotechnologists are patient and are brave people. So maybe you will be uh, uh, support to sit through this presentation. You see the title, gene Brown Gene Engineering. It's a fascinating science. It has a tremendous responsibility and a tremendous potential for application but we have to communicate it to society, otherwise we will run into problems. You have all seen the Millennium Goals. They are extremely important. A, a billion, hundred million people who are hungry at the moment, it's impossible to accept it. All the different goals, if you analyze it, they actually all can be related to uh, plant gene engineering. If you see primary education, well, go to Africa, you will see in the primary school there are 150 children. They don't learn anything. As soon as the farmer has a, a bit more income, he send, can send children to private school and there they really learn and have maybe a chance to, have, to go to secondary school. We'll not analyze them. They are all, can, all of the items, uh, gender problems, can be uh, received Fantastic contributions if we can have that our agriculture is becoming more performing, if the, the poor rural farmers have a better salary, have a better income. But unfortunately, we also see we are already 2010. The Millennium Goals will not be there. Surely not if we stay with the, the way we do our agriculture at the moment and even if we take the best of the technologies we have, uh, it will not be in 2015, but it would be good that there is hope because at the moment we realize that we have to increase our productivity with the increasing population, with all the needs there are. We need urgently to develop an income for the rural poor. Science alone will not do it. It's the political solutions that we need, but if we the scientists are able to communicate to society what they are doing, the potentials from what they are doing, well, there is a chance that maybe some politicians will do the effort to take care of the infrastructures, to do all what is needed, that the market uh, products, uh, the market can be reached by, by the products of the farmers, and that this circle in which we are now for 50 years is really broken and that we can increase. But surely, if we do that, we have to remember that environment plays a major role for the survival of our planet. So we have to do it on the same amount of arable land. So if we want to do that, we will need enormous investments. We have to convince our authorities to take agriculture very serious, that scientists can progress and that there would be the means to do it. And those who will do it are really the people who take initiatives. So we need to have small, medium enterprises to do it. We need seed industries in each corner of Latin America. People will bring the new products to the farmer. It's, we have not to wait on the multinationals till they want to take care of the uh, populations. It's we in the public sector who have to take these responsibilities. We know that the GM crops have been branded as dangerous, as unnecessary, uh, that it's something unnatural, that it brings problems for health, problems for the environment, that's all the privilege of multinationals. Well, that's a n the point of the discussion today, that we have to communicate to all our colleagues who are taken by the slogans that people like in Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth falsely spreading, that it is no 
it's not the, the, the case. We badly need these signs and we can absolutely use them. What is the moment agriculture? What are the threats? What is important? That's all over. We need chemicals to protect our plants. That's expensive. It harms the environment very often. And we should be able to do it without. There is a lot of dietary shortages. It could be improved because the breeding that has been done is for basic uh, stable food, but there is for really uh, best uh, healthy conditions, we need a variety of food and most people cannot afford it at the moment. We have to see that we construct plants that are really uh, meeting the needs of the people with malnutrition. We have to see how we stop wasting uh, in, the, in our rich countries all this food. And these plants have to be done, made and can be made. And we have to realize that we are against groups that are extremely active to give disinformation, spread false information, really try to have society away from GM. Why do they do it? Well, just for their mere existence. If they have a, uh, such a high budget, it's because many people donate to save the planet and they claim that it's their speciality to save the planet. Our answer is no, it's science. It's sound science, serious science. It's the work uh, of the public sector scientists and all the people that do an effort in small and private companies, uh, that is the activity that will save the planet. And if you see these slogans that Greenpeace was spreading all over India, not in Europe, because people were already skeptical against that statement that the Austrian government had made on the base of a finding uh, that was incomplete of an Austrian scientist, that GM crops would make sterile, that we would have uh, no offspring anymore if we were forced uh, to have uh, eating GM foods. That are the pictures that was spread in India where people were believing that and a reason to mobilize. If you see that, you know that you're not talking science, you know you're talking politics and we have to see how we handle it in a politic way. If we have to realize, if they say it's unnatural, that it is on the contrary, it's what is most natural. It's the basis of evolution. Genomes are not stable structures. It are all dynamic evolutionary structures. There's always genes that are switched on, switched off, depending on the stress situation, on the environmental change. And that is there with genes that are already present in bacteria and that by, through duplication and small alterations and the genome sequencing now learns it uh, the way it, it is going. And we see that the world is one big genetic laboratory, that the whole concept of pure race is absolutely a nonsense. Uh, it's, uh, that the pure race is a st stable genome that there would be there for always. No, everything changes permanently. There are movable elements that makes that this race can survive. And the way it survives now is different than the way it, was, it survived 50 years ago. And it's only that, this knowledge, that is very recent. That's actually most of it is even from 21st century, all the details we, we start knowing now, that that is what we are applying. And if somebody says you that uh, your salad is crisp because we put a human, we put a, a red gene in it, and then if, if you are in a country where people eat rats, then they say it's, we put a human gene in it, that's in China, and people don't like to eat their ancestors, and even a Muslim country, they say we put a pig gene in it, then you know once more that we are not talking science, that we are uh, talking really mind manipulation, not genetic manipulation, but really a, a vil si uh, society game that is irresponsible and that I would even sometimes say is criminal if you see all the results it has 
to, uh, towards society. 